This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, head over to BigHeadsMedia.com. Hi there, folks, and welcome to the Gilmore, the Gilmarrier. It's a Gilmore Girls podcast brought to you by us over at TV Tuners. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is my co-host and uh, Iceman, who has brought ice (laughs) for everybody. Stairmaster. Mm. You brought ice to the party. You saved us, buddy. I don't like your attitude, Maverick, but that was some good piloting. You can be my wingman anytime. If, if Iceman made more coffee, would he be suitable for the role of Luke in this show? He'd be Ice Coffee Man. Hmm. I'm sorry. Something to think about. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> uh, and with us, as always, of course, is our other co-host and um, m- mother who's trying her <laughs> best to tr- remember anything about her daughter and granddaughter Livia Soprano I'm just going to cause problems today I think (laughs) yeah you're just like a problem starter just like Livia Soprano in a lot of ways uh, Emily Gilmore is similar just one has a sort of richer standard of living yeah and Uh, she's probably less racist than Livia Soprano I I don't think she's ever going to say those blacks True. Although, she's probably thought it. <laughs> Haven't we so, all? Uh, hmm. <laughs> no. Uh-oh. No, Jerry Master's outed himself again. <laughs> <laughs> Exposed. Fair record timing. Usually you, you get deep listeners. into a podcast before it happens. <laughs> For all of our new listeners, that's a bit. We are TV Tuners is an anti-racist podcast. That's true. We don't even see color. That's why we're a podcast. There's no color involved at all. It's only sound. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so, yes, welcome to the Gilmore and the Gilmarrier. Episode six. We're back with, uh, we've, we've got a new five episodes given to us by Geo over uh, on our Buy Me a Coffee page. Geo. So we're, this, is the, this is the first of our, uh, our second five episode round of Gilmore Girls. And hopefully the last. But hey, it might not be, because you can go over to Buy Me a Coffee slash TV Tuners and buy whatever you want, really. If you're an absolute sicko, you could do that. Yeah, if you're a sadist. Can we just let let people do this? Just permit them to just do as they please with us? I I permit them to give us money so that we will watch a, a thing that they want us to watch. A single episode gives you a single topic of discussion. An episode of... TV, maybe a movie. Uh, that's really, really. In, that's really intense, Swanson. I don't know if I can handle, you know, all that. Yeah, it is. A, it's a lot to take in, you know. But uh, it's an offer that is still standing and will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, and hey, you know, that's that's one of many ways that you can give back to the podcast. You can also uh, send I, us an email. What? That's right. That's one of many ways. Another one of many ways. Yeah, if you have any quips, comments, questions, foresights, otherwise, mm-hmm. you can send them to us at tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. What's that email, Kieran? I gotta let this sink in a little bit. We can take emails. That's like that's like cyberspace type stuff. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. So it's like a mailbox? Sort of, yeah. Yes, um, it is a box, a storage, if you will. Yeah, so you had said the address to that was TV Tuners Podcast at gmail dot com, right? One eight hundred right. cars for kids. One eight hundred cars for kids. Ah, uh, I've heard it on the radio, something like that. Yeah, you donate your car, and they like <laughs> they give it to a child. <laughs> <laughs> here, Billy. Here's a here's a Hyundai Elantra. Just a bunch of like, 
Ethiopians in like Smash Mouth t-shirts driving around in Hondas and like <laughs> 80s Hondas and they're all like 10. Yeah. <laughs> well, the adults got their newer cars because they can actually afford them, obviously. Right. Yeah, it's a great it's a great life. <laughs> it's a great life uh, we're making for them. Yeah, that's right. Uh and you can feel like Geo who gave us <gasps> this email. The short and thick of it. Fellas, uh-huh. Well, well, I hope you had a good time playing grab ass and hacky sack out in Tahiti. Because while you fucks were on sabbatical, we slipped 14 and a half goddamn points in the ratings. How many times have I told you fucking community college pot dealers that pot that the podcast game is consistency, consistency, consistency? Don't worry, though, fellas. The boys in engineering just got back to me with the numbers. They're tight. But I still see a chance to turn it around in some key markets. If Stairmaster works three chode-based puns into this very episode, uh, hmm. we'll be in position to retake the electric toothbrush buying demographic. Wait, chode-based puns? Yeah, that's right. Mm, we gotta get a lot more blue, fellas. From there, we take the mattress game. And before you know it, those Griffin boys will be buying us out. Maybe about 80 double large. That's thirteen five a piece, and we uh, and we can all retire early. Take it easy. Maybe get the fuck out of Denver before the cat Colorado dries up and the mountains fall down. Buy some land in Kansas. Just hit the dusty chode and leave this podcast game oh, behind us. The dusty chode. Mm, you should get that checked said. out, Geo. Lucinda Williams on the stereo. Keo Rain picking up smoking, watching the sunset. The distant west will never return to. Todd, I believe in you. Buttoned up, three stacks Gia. on the radio. All right, it's so I got a Friday, question. Day, Swanson. night. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, Gio. <laughs> yeah, so when did Gio become our manager? Has he been our manager? I forgot. Is he Mr. Uh, Dickhead? It, it varies from a, a email to email on what Gio actually does for us, if anything at all. But uh, it seems like in our absence, Gio's been, I don't know, managing the podcast. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. Are we paying you? No. Oh, do okay, we pay I mean, anyone? <laughs> do well, we start... pay anyone? <laughs> Let's stare. If you have to ask that question, you don't know. Well, actually, well, we have been we have been paying the head intern. Big head intern. Yeah, it's um. You know, we had unpaid interns, but one of the interns got a little bit too. What's the word like? Big. He started growing large, and we couldn't contain him in the cellar anymore. Yeah, he's very big. <laughs> so he said that he's going to be getting paid, and I couldn't really say no. So yeah, yeah, we're, we're talking, you know, six figure salary here. Unfortunately, he's a big, he's a big guy. This intern. Yeah, we he, had to. And take he talks funny. Look. He talks kind of funny, doesn't he? Yes. He comes up to us and he's like, "I will be paid my <laughs> wages." <laughs> And he's bald. Yeah, he's completely bald. Very big, though. Like, intimidatingly big. Yeah, so, I, yeah, we're not gonna so, not pay that person, so. Yeah, we are now $600,000 in debt to John Gotti. So, if you, if you want to hit up Buy Me a Coffee, you should do that quick. Yes, if you, well, we're still alive. Yeah. Stair should work in those chode-based puns, too. We really want to get these demographics up. Oh, that's going to be hard. We don't really talk about penises that much on this podcast. You just have to well, rhyme something with the word. That's it. It's very easy. All right, I'll you know, try. But... Anyway, uh, thanks for the email, Gio. It's nice to have some sort of... Uh... Support. Yeah. Uh, speaking of support, another way you can support us is by going over to our Twitter page. As we mentioned, we talked about the interns just a little bit ago, and most of what our Twitter comprises of is great TV content. But what it's really used for, uh, our Twitter, by the way, at TV Tuners, is uh, our interns scour the Twitter space looking for the Tweet of the Week, and then they send it over to our good pal, Stairmaster. Stair, what is the Tweet of the Week? All right, this Tweet of the Week comes from Yaoi Deuteragonist, Deuter- Deuteragonist, at BoyKiller344, who writes, I'm going to bed. Okay, is that it? Yep. 
Hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. What time was this posted at? 10.05 p.m. p.m. my time. Oh. 10.05 my time. If you count in regular hours. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's your uh, time, Keo? It's, uh, it's 8.05. Oh, sorry, 7.05. <laughs> mm. Yeah, all of our computers have never been set to Denver time. <laughs> yeah, we don't actually know what time it is. Which is part of the reason our episodes come out late. I mean, to be fair, time is relative. It doesn't really matter. It's that this well, all we need to know really is that Boy Killer three four four is tired, asleep as we're recording Go- this, going to bed early. Depend which, de- depending. I don't we're, know. Ten we're is not, we're not sure how early. We yeah, just know it's early. Time is relative, so we for them. I suppose it's the regular time for bed. Well, no, because then they wouldn't be announcing it on Twitter. Yeah, it's too early and oh? not time not time for bed. I'd argue if they're sleepy, they should go to bed. Or no, they just want to think- read a book. I'm thinking that if you're like, you know, a grown adult ready for business and all that, you stay up, you know, a few hours past when you get sleepy. Yeah, I think just- we should abolish bedtime. Oh, this is a bold take. For everybody? Like children? Yeah. Yes. So, like, they, children, if a child is tired, they should just fall to the floor and sleep. Yes. Well, they should lay down. I don't think they should fall to the floor. Well, but here's the thing with children, Stairmaster, is that often they do not want to go to sleep. <laughs> well, then they'll learn to go to sleep when they're sleepy during the day. Oh, I think we should give them some uppers. Mm. Oh. You know, give them a little Coke? Just, like. <laughs> yeah, a cola. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Coca Cola. Caffeine that's right. in it. That's an upper. Yeah, just like you know, get them, get them energized for because they got work to do. Honestly, to be honest with you guys, that's right. That's how capitalism works. No matter how old you are, there's work to do. No matter how young you are, there's work to do. You know, I'm looking at these numbers here. This they're, uh, GDP they're not crunching number. themselves, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, the GDP number needs to get bigger, like way faster. Honestly, yeah. in my opinion, and that's the way to do do it. <laughs> we need kids, kids to be laborers. <laughs> that's the America well, I grew up in. Wow, Swanson is looking into Biden's twenty twenty four campaign material. Yeah, I've I've come back from the future, and guys, you're not going to believe it. Well, you will, but actually, it's, it's very plausible. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm gonna tune in on this. Going to bed rocks. Yeah, I love it when you just put the bed sheets around you. Yeah, I wish cool. I could just go to bed at a healthy hour. What's your preferred sleeping <laughs> method? Like, what do you what where what's what what you a side sleeper? Uh, lay yeah, on I the sleep back? on my side. I can't sleep on my back because my knees get bothered if I have my legs outstretched. Kia. Um, it depends on where I'm sleeping. Well, what if you're sleeping in, like, the dirt? In the dirt? I sleep face down. <laughs> yeah, I would sleep on yeah. my side if I was in the dirt. Yeah, I'm a, I, I'm with Stairmaster here. I'm a side sleeper. I, uh, I, I alternate sides, but I do uh, enjoy the side. Are you no, a big side. spoon or a little spoon, Swanson? <laughs> it depends on who the other spoon is. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Side doesn't happen when I'm sleeping by myself. That's not going to happen. That's like cops called for me. But you're just like, so what, you're just sprawled out in the bed? Yes. Yeah, it's my bed. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> and what, okay, what's yeah, the, what, uh, what are the covers situations like? You got all, you, you just wrapped up in covers? I just have the, you know, the throw, the bed thing. I, I just have, have, like. I don't lay under sheets. I just have, like, a, a blanket just on top of me, just like haphazardly. Yeah, that's usually how I do it, too. Well, I'll also have a third pillow that I wrap my arms around. I do have I part know. of the blanket that just goes, like, under one leg and on top of the other because I don't like the... Uh, oh, Swanson, you're a mess. Why? I, I don't know. I don't like the way the... the, the I, don't, I don't know. I don't like the... I, I can't really fall asleep any other way. I don't know. I don't trust like that. <laughs> 
Um, so- yeah, how do, you, how do you guys sleep in the dirt? What I do is I, I collapse in despair, first to my knees, and then I just topple over and I pass out in the dirt. What do you guys do? Uh, first well, I, I usually- rend my garment. I sort, of, <laughs> I sort of dig like a little pit for me to sleep in. Yeah, <laughs> I, I rend my garment and then I put like soil on my head. And then I sort of like weep uh-huh. to God. And I fall asleep. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. And usually I tell Swanton that it's a god to her weeping at what man is does to themselves. Yeah. Are you like standing over while he's trying to go to sleep? Yeah. yeah. Stair does this often. <laughs> You're a good friend, Stair. I have to be there for Swanson because no one else will. It's true. This is also what he Definitely tells me. not me. <laughs> Swanson lived on his own underground. Lived on his own underground. Anyway, uh, I think that's a tune in for Boy Killer three forty four. I tuned out, but yeah. Well, it's this is double. We me well, and Star tuned in, so you're wrong. He ran <laughs> wrong again. Wrong. Well, we gotta get that wrong counter going. Ding. <laughs> uh, so yeah, congratulations, Boy Killer three forty four. Good tweet. Solid work. Uh, and yeah, with that out of the way, I guess I have to ask a, a, a important question. Did you guys watch anything fun this week? Anything interesting? Something you want to talk no. about? Well, I did watch the Many Saints of Newark. Come on! Aye! Hey, Maroon! How was oh. it? Oh! Uh, uh? Kind of, it's kind of a mess. Yeah, I have I've heard mixed things about it, so I haven't watched it yet. Like the lead antagonist just walks out of the plot. Oh. And it's not it's not in a good way like No Country for Old Men. Or there's no real confrontation between them at the end. How's uh how's John Bernthal? Oh, he's great. Alright. There's a great there's great performances all around. There's some really good scenes, but as a whole it doesn't flow well. What about uh what about like Gand- there's, Gandolfini, there's one... the young one. He's great. Okay. There's a really heartbreaking scene with Gandolfini and the uh, lady playing Livia. Interesting. Where she... You don't have to spoil it. It's a, yeah. it's a very okay. recent movie. I think the worst part is that they retconned Silvio to be bald and also like 10 years older than Tony. What the hell? It's anti-Italian discrimination. <laughs> Yeah. Huh. What'd you what do we? Well, what's this? Is it t- is this is a Sopranos movie? movie. Oh. The why movie isn't it called? Why isn't it called the Sopranos movie? It's called. It, it does have the subtitle "A Sopranos Story." Or in case you get confused. not on the poster. It's true. But in all of the trailers, they do put have a Sopranos story. For those confused, I guess when someone says, "Are you Tony Soprano?" The answer is no. Luckily, they have Christopher come back as a narrator, specifically so he can say, that's Tony Soprano. Uh, huh. That's a choice. Uh, it's that's one it? of the that's... better choices in that movie, I think. Is that is that all he says? He says a lot of things, like how Neil Young gave a speech for the moon when the 60s ended. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So even also, in, he is giving this speech directly from his gravestone, from his grave. So he's in like some sort of afterlife, talking about the past. The first shot of the movie is like panning past these tombstones, and you hear people talking about their deaths. And the third one is Christopher, who's like, "When I got here, I told them I ex- I explored the criminal lifestyle, but I still ended up here anyways." And then it goes into the good village, you know, slick. Shit. What's that word? Stick. 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 Yeah. Totally different word you came up with there. Mm. So Good uh, thing it doesn't mean anything. It does mean something. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Key or in? Wrong again. Ding. <laughs> uh, so is that a tune in or a tune out? Uh, I guess if you're a Sopranos fan, tune in. 
Okay. Oh, if I'm you're not. not, there's no reason to watch this movie if you haven't seen The Sopranos. Yeah. I've seen The Sopranos. I'm just not a fan. I hate it. Oh, you should watch this movie then. Keo hates feeling sad. That's why his favorite show is Zeta Gundam. Yeah. Exactly. I guess in a way this is like the Zeta Gundam of The Sopranos. Isn't The Sopranos the, the Zeta Gundam, Gundam of The Sopranos? No, The Sopranos is the mobile suit Gundam of The Sopranos since it came first. It's not nearly <laughs> that sad enough. Also, The Sopranos is the mobile suit Gundam of The Sopranos because The Sopranos is always called the American Evangelion, and Evangelion is just a ripoff of mobile suit Gundam. Hmm. I'm confused, like very, very upset and confused right now. <laughs> Someone needs to make like a chart of what Stairmaster is. Yeah, said. where does this fit into the Tony Hawk skating game timeline? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get back to us on that uh, email address, of course, TV Tuners Podcast at gmail dot com. Which games are which games and movies are canon with the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater timeline? I'm pretty sure Kotor one and two. But it, not Knights of the Old Republic, the MMO. Is the Tony Hawk <laughs> thing just the Tommy Westfall universe of video games? Where the one kid who uh, has, like, the one kid in St. Elsewhere at the season, series finale, uh, it's revealed that it was all a dream in his autistic no, it's mind. Just, it's just a joke about the Kingdom Hearts and the Zelda timeline. Oh, okay. There's nothing convoluted. There's no connection between Tony Hawk games at all. Sorry. No, uh, it's fine by me. Anything else you watch? That's a real shame. Stare? They should fix that. No. All right. Uh, I didn't watch anything. I thought about watching something. I was like, hey, maybe I should watch something. And then you know what I did? You jerked off. Wow, way to out me, Stare. Thank you. <laughs> he was going to say something else. Nobody on this podcast else. jerks off. <laughs> this would be a perfect way to introduce yeah. some sort of pun. Oh, you uh, rode your chode. Okay, that count counts. Down. Ding. That's one. And what I did was I didn't watch anything. What were you thinking yeah. about watching? We'll do hypotheticals, I guess, this week. <laughs> You can tell us what you think it would have been like. <laughs> yeah, I was if, thinking, it, if you thought it would be a tune-in or a tune-out. I was thinking about watching something highly entertaining and something to think about. You mean like Gundam? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then I guess like, that would be a tune-in. Yeah, I would imagine that I was hoping to have a tune-in. <laughs> yeah, you usually don't think about watching something with the intent that this is going to be bad. Unless it's, you know, unless, for perhaps a podcast. Unless you're farming it for content, right? Yeah, yeah, like we do. Like us sickos. Yeah, like <laughs> the sickos. Us gross boys. Um, yeah, alright. That works for me. Sure. Um, oh, you know what? I do have something I can talk about. Uh, it's not out yet, but I've, I'm back on my bullshit uh, watching oh. horrible sitcoms from years oh. past and i found a doozy uh this is a 80s sitcom uh called we got it made is this about the Uh-oh. mafia no it's about two uh bachelors who live in new york who hire a maid for their apartment no it's never explained okay. how they can afford this but they do <laughs> hire this lady to be a live-in maid and get this she's hot uh oh. Well, that sounds really expensive. So you watch the pornography, Swanson? You nice. would think, based off of how the pilot episode <laughs> goes, because the crux of the pilot episode is that somehow she gets tramped outside of the apartment naked. You don't see anything, obviously. Well, this is an 80s this, sitcom. Uh, but... Oh, you get to see boobs in the many scenes of Newark. So tune in, okay. Yeah, tune in. Um, but that's the crux of the pilot episode of this show. We got it made. Uh, so basically, here's the general pitch of this show. I mean, I gave you the real one, but this is like what the board meeting probably was. It's reverse threes company. Instead of two girls and one guy living in living together, it's two guys and one girl. What if they replace the guy with a cup? Hmm. And the other guy with another girl. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I meant <laughs> two girls. I don't understand your reference you're making, Stairmaster. <laughs> Explain expand on this. <laughs> okay, so there's two girls and there's one cup. What do you think is going to happen next? <laughs> they probably, like, are going to put a drink in the cup, right? Like, yeah, yeah that sounds what, what kind of drink? Do. <laughs> probably, like... Liquid, hopefully. Like, Crystal Pepsi? Yeah, it's Crystal Pepsi. That is what they did. I think that is one th- worse than what actually happens in that video. <laughs> <laughs> Pull out a two liter of Crystal Pepsi. Uh, Everyone's just like, oh, ew, what? <laughs> <laughs> Who would drink that? <laughs> this yeah, is why we die. sketch comedy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, We Got It Made is like, obviously, it sounds bad already, right? It sounds like kind of a crappy show. It sounds like something like that could be on the TV. Like, yeah, I really think when there's I'm, new sexual content to work. When I'm when I'm like at the dentist office or something, and I'm like, it's like on, and I'm just not entertained by it, something like that. Yeah, it's well, it's also filled with jokes that like wouldn't even pass muster on like two and a half men. Oh, uh, and also, you know, it should go. It shouldn't go unstated that all the actors are just not doing anything impressive here. Uh, so this show gets canceled one season, then a few years later, brought back in syndication. Why? No one really seems to be able to tell me why. <laughs> I did. I read so this many articles really about why this show of all shows would be brought back, and there's no real rationale besides NBC needed a show to run for this thing they were doing with syndication. And Did they, like, spin a wheel? They spun a wheel, I guess, of canceled programs in the past couple years. And brought this one back. Uh, the thing is that this one was... The, the, the reboot... Uh, there was... One of the guys got recast. Uh, they had Neighbors now, who was a, a policeman and his son. And uh, it just seemed like it was a little less risque than the original. Because, you know, it's on syndication, so... Anyway, that also got canceled after one season. Of course. Um, and it should go without saying, both versions of the show are absolutely awful. Which one was worse, though? Which one was worse? The first. The first was worse. Because the second one's just like a generic sitcom. The first is a sitcom that's trying to be like so many things at once. It's uh, It's bad. Uh, all right. Well, all of that's out of the way. So there's only one more segment before we get to the show. A segment that I'm being told is very popular. It's Stairmaster's Recipe Corner. That's right. It's Team Kia Rain. Mmm. 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 Mm. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, I only heard like Kia go mm, once. Yeah, that's the thing. Just... That's what I'm making sure. <laughs> No, like, uh, in the actual recording, you're going to hear more uh, strange mm sounds. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Stairmaster, you're going to be giving us a, a recipe for iced tea. That's right. Okay. With okay. a twist. Oh, yes. There's a, there's a twist to this? Yeah, what's a twist? Is your recipe, yeah, Stair? Well, you, oh. You're asking us the recipe? <laughs> Oh, I thought I thought I was gonna be informed of a twist. You think Gordon Ramsay goes into the kitchen and says, "What's the twist?" <laughs> yes, I think You're he talks to gonna... the producers a lot before going on the air. All right, so Stair, a twist for iced tea would just be telling you the ingredient, and you're gonna say you're gonna put it in the iced tea. There's no way you oh. can. <laughs> okay, so I gotta be more clever than that. <laughs> All right, so just rock yeah. it, walk us through the ice tw- iced tea, and then get to the twist. Okay, so first you get a grinder for the tea leaves, since you got to make them into tea. Okay. Then you okay. pour the wow. tea dust into the water. That is a way or, of describing it, yeah. And then you start boiling that water. Okay. And then, uh... Okay, so you get some pepperoni, and you start chopping that up into very thin oh. slices. Interesting. Like, paper thin. It's like, literally paper thin. Just like, you think I'm being ridiculous but this will only work if you have a paper thin slice of pepperoni so you need a very sharp knife for this recipe no you, yes 
No, you need a dull one to get very. You need thin. a very dull <laughs> knife, actually. <laughs> so you got the paper thin. So then you kind of grind it with your fingers over the tea, so it becomes dust-like, and you pour that into the tea. And now you got salty pepperoni flavored tea. Okay, Wait, so far, make... <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> Okay, so I far this say, is. I would say like one or two slices of the pepperoni. Depending so, on are we done? Oh, wait, you wanted me to make this iced tea? That's right. Well, once it's done boiling, then you put it in the fridge. Wait for it to cool off. And then we're done. Yeah. So, like, what you're telling me is you're, we're going to drink like this <laughs> liquid that has like a bunch of particles. This floating. salty meat liquid. <laughs> what you want us to drink yes. there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes all right with the tea leaves just just openly floating in it you're not going to seep that out or anything oh like you that. put it in the grinder <laughs> yeah but you I don't think know it does you... like you told us to put it in the water after it's done yeah grinding. after grinding it and then you boil it so it cooks. Okay, what do you think what do you think grinding up tea leaves does to the tea do you think it, it makes it, it into tea powder do you think it makes it like soluble like i it's hope dissolve? so you think it's gonna the leaves are gonna dissolve in the water? Well, how else would you get it in the tea? Logically oh, my. speaking, have you ever made tea before? No, I'm not British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's got you there. You're not British, and you're also not Asian, so that that true. checks out. It's true. Famously not Asian, Stairmaster. Two things <laughs> do not DM Stairmaster saying he sounds like. <laughs> oh, we all know I don't sound British. Because yeah. of the Sancho okay. tried to. So it's time to educate Stairmaster, I think, Swanson. Do you want to tell him? Well, I want to tell him something uh, that I thought was a missed <laughs> opportunity here. Which is, he was talking about cutting okay. some pepperoni. Definitely time oh, for a yes. pun. For definitely so definitely could have pu- put a pun in there. <laughs> but uh, as for the, the drink itself, Stair. Uh, yes? You got the boiling water part right. <laughs> I'll give okay, you that. What about the pepperoni part? Well, that was, I guess, your twist. <laughs> yeah, you set me up for this. You asked for this. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess I did. I don't know, Keo. You, you won't. Would Would you drink this beverage? Is the real question that we should ask ourselves here. No, and <laughs> I wanted to educate Stairmaster on tea leaves here a little bit. You want to read the tea leaves to him? Yeah. Teach me Kyo sense senpai. <laughs> oh, that's so flattering. So here's here's the deal, Stairmaster. When when you got like tea leaves and you like grind them up, they're still like leaves. Uh-huh. So So if you put the leaves in the water, yeah. it's just gonna like be like leaves they're just gonna be floating in, in there. the water. Like there's no way to ground <laughs> them up into like a powder. Then how do you make tea? You 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 like <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Usually, people use a use a tea bag for that. That's the simplest way to keep the powder out of like the. It's not Wait, even a powder. It's more of like a grainy uh, how texture does this, to it. How does it, how does the tea get in the water though? If you don't want it, it's just that you're, <laughs> you're getting the juice through the bag. You're juicing yeah, the water like, with like, the tea. Like the hot water makes like the the tea like seep out and like get the tea like. S- <laughs> I don't know what it even is, but. The idea is, Stairmaster, like, if you don't want, like, the little leaves, like, in the drink, you, like, either separate it after you're done making the tea, or you just use a tea bag. That's usually what the tea bag's for. Either method okay. preferable. Uh, but this, this would also separate out the little chunks of pepperoni meat <laughs> floating yeah, in this. I, I need a solution to that, Keo. How do we work around that? Well, this would do the same thing. Maybe, maybe a, okay, so maybe you, after the tea bag fades, then you put the pepperoni in. You, you're going to pour the thing through a strainer, I'm pretty sure, is what you're going to want to do. And then you would have your concoction of tea <laughs> and meat. Yeah, like, there'll be like a greasy layer on the top of it. Which is very because, attractive uh, to look at if you just pour that out in a mug. Because, again, fat is not... Is a very specifically not water soluble. <laughs> yeah. So that's just going to be like skimming on the top there, and there's going to be like saltiness and spiciness in the tea. 
So it sounds. Is this, is this what the kind of drink up kind of meal you want? <laughs> Why well, you're you you asked for it? <laughs> no. This is uh this is Stair's recipe. So you know, drink up, Keyorn. I made it with love, Keo. Well, fine. I'll drink it. Here, here goes. Yeah, right. we actually have it prepared All right, here. Let's, we'll take. We'll both take a sip here. And we do not uh, have a medic on hand. <coughs> um. <coughs> all right. <let> me, <coughs> okay. Let me take a sip here. Strong. Oh. Oh. Mm. Strong. But good. It's strong, but it's just like I don't know. It's got a nice texture to it. Yeah, a nice texture. Got a, got kick. Yeah, a nice aftertaste. A little kick. Very, yeah, ooh. Oh, Keo's drinking the whole pot. Oh. Mm. He's just slurping that thing down. Grease and all. Sarah, make some more of this. Yes, sir. And that's that's TV Tuners, folks, the number one (laughs) cooking podcast on iTunes. That's right. We're We're in that market now. You know, speaking of demographics that we're going after. Uh, all right. Well, that's been Stairmaster's Recipe Corner. Be sure to use that recipe in your uh, own cooking. And, uh, yeah, with all that out of the way, I think we can waste no more time. It's time for us to discuss this week's Gilmore Girls. What? Yeah, we watched an episode of Gilmore Girls, and uh, now I guess we're going to talk about it. This week's episode... How are we now? I- I'm planning on it. Are you? <laughs> I I wasn't, but like, I guess we can. Okay, I mean, as long as we're on, like, a similar page. I had other plans for this episode. Oh? Well, like what? Um, well, we can always talk about uh, Gundam. Yes? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think I know one person who would be real happy about that. And his name is... Puffiver. That's right. <laughs> um, so what we talked about this week is Rory's Birthday Parties. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is our sixth episode here. Basically, we open up with uh, you know it's a it's a it's a dinner time conversation. There's uh, bickering going on back and forth between mom and daughter, as there always is. Mm-hmm. Um, Natural enemies, yeah. mother and daughter. That's right. Yeah, as I've witnessed, this is a fact of nature. It's true. There's no denying it. Uh, the mom brings out pudding, and this shocks Lorelai. Because the mom, her mom Emily, remembered that she likes pudding. That's a thing, I which guess. is just astonishing. How could a mother remember? No, her no. only child. Yeah, she remember any details about her only child? Um, I that just kind of like I don't know. Suspension of disbelief was just a little strained. Well, when you have that much bitterness towards a parent, I suppose any sort of mutual love being shown is shocking. no no i no i mean like i mean a mother remembering stuff like that i don't, I don't believe it I'm like, oh yeah yeah it doesn't make any sense <laughs> uh so yeah they're shocked um and then they start putting post-it notes on things that they might want in the house is that what they're doing yeah they're, they're saying like oh i'm gonna be dead yeah, soon so like that one episode of ed ed and eddie <laughs> oh yeah yeah double d's house <laughs> So, uh, yeah, they're putting post notes on things that they want in the house, which is, I guess, how they spend the rest of the evening there. Um, Emily informs Lorelai that uh, she rem- she heard that Roy's birthday is coming up, and it happens to be on a Friday, which is when they have these dinners. So she's going to be throwing a party. Uh, there's a bit and of pushback. And it's also the 13th. Yeah, interesting that she was born on Friday the 13th. Do you think that means Jason could be afoot? <sighs> that would have been a different program. <laughs> Yeah, uh, would better program Kieran for you? It would have been more exciting. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting if you see Lori Lorelai walking down the street and Michael Myers peeps around the corner <laughs> and peeps, but no, then he never shows up again. Oh uh, no, he comes back to murder people. Oh okay, that's what I was thinking. Lee. I, I I was thinking like maybe you see him like a couple more and a couple different shots, but he never he, the murdering you... doesn't happen. And on screen, <laughs> he he's just there for like basically no reason. Yeah. Okay. What if what happens is you see Michael Myers, and he is just sort of watching people, 
And then when they need ice and they go and the door is open, it's just Mike Myers standing there with some ice. <laughs> oh, that'd be horrible. And they're all just like, Why? whoa, it's the ice guy. And he's just standing there. Hands them some ice. He, and then just like. He lets him have the ice? Yeah, he lets him have the ice and then he just walks off. And we we don't see him again, but people do disappear from the party. And there's no comment on this. They're just like. Yeah, they disappear from the party and never show up on the show again. What mm. if he drops the ice on someone, crushing them instantly? That'd be and a lot. Hyper realistic blood seeping from under the ice. It'd be a lot of ice. Well, he's got like an I ice mean, he chest. Did bring a, to be fair, he did bring a lot of ice. Mm, I guess you're right. In the show, the regular ice man, who did cometh. All right, what if he brought an ice sculpture of himself and the ice sculpture started They're like, people? oh, an ice sculpture of Michael Myers, and then they see the real Michael Myers behind it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <Like, gasps> that that's great. I do like that. But it, what if it's an, an ice sculpture of a knife and then stabs people <laughs> with it? He rips and, it off the stand. Yeah, exactly. It's like... Yeah, that would be scary. I think we need to start writing I, Halloween movies now is what I'm getting out of I this. I think it would be scary to be pursued by Michael Myers. Frankly, I'd be terrified. I would I, probably die. I would hate personally. to be in this situation. Kia, you think you'd die? Why is that? Because Michael Myers would kill me. Mm. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? I feel like the same would happen to me. Unless I could get like a really good kick in, and knock him over. Oh, you think that's what you're gonna do, but that's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, but then you'd fall into a false sense of security. Oh, I knocked him over. Yeah, and then he's gonna rip kick your leg off, him. and he's gonna kill you with it. Yeah, I w- I would stand over him like like gloating about it. Yeah, he would grab like the back of your leg and pull the tendon out. Yeah, and then just stab you with it repeatedly. Yeah, I would just be like, oh, at that point, you know. Yeah. I think if you see Michael Myers, you just die right there, right? I would die like of terror. I stops? would kill myself on the spot, yeah. of course. Well, like, if you just stand there and you're like... Has, has there ever been a situation where Michael Myers saw some... Someone saw Michael Myers and was just like, Alright, just fucking do it now. <laughs> I would imagine just, like, get it over with. Because the, the worst part about Michael Myers is just, like waiting for it right yeah i mean that's the worst part with any serial or uh movie horror villain right but mike myers michael myers in in particular is all about like just sort of lurking okay you you know it's over but there's just nothing you can do about it that's that's not fun no Mm -hmm. yeah and like I, i wonder if you just were like all right let's do it now he would just like leave and wait (laughs) And you would just like he would like wait like a day, just so you were like, all right, well, I don't know if he's coming back or not. And hey, would he? I'm thinking he'd probably text you a couple times. You up? <laughs> you up? <laughs> Jinx. Um, well, we know Michael Myers can't talk, but can he text? I don't see why not. He could at the very least send you an emoji, right? He can Even drive. Like... We all know that. It's true. He can <laughs> drive. Not very well, but he can drive. <laughs> what emoji would he send you? A knife. He'd send you eggplant <laughs> emoji, peach emoji, knife. I'm thinking he was in the laughing, crying emoji. Knife emoji, no, laughing, crying feels... emoji, and then a house emoji. Do you, do you think he feels emotions? <laughs> yeah. He's mysterious, happy. that guy. I think he feels the pain. I think he feels pain. Is that an emotion? I guess that's just a... I don't know. Is that an emotion? That's a good question, Kieran. I don't think so. What if you got? What if I got a good combo win on him? Like, I punched him, like, did an uppercut, drop kick, got him on the ground. He would rip your arm off and punch you with it. Ooh. So my combo wouldn't work? It would... It, you would... It would be dazed. He might even drop his knife. You would knock him out. Yeah. And then in the cutscene, he would kill you. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, that's the lead. That's the worst thing. Like when you win the battle and then like the cutscene is you just getting owned. Well, you should have known better. Yeah, that's what you get for winning the play battle. this game. You don't play the game. Michael Myers plays the game. Anyway, uh, as for Gilmore Girls, there's no Michael Myers in this episode. Sorry to disappoint. Um, I know you're all looking forward to it. Instead, Rory is uh, having her birthday party, and Lorelai's mom, Emily, wants to throw it at uh, her place. And Lorelai wants to have a get-together there. So it ends up being that Rory's having two birthday parties. Um, she's not that psyched for the idea of two birthday parties. Which, I guess, as a, a, t- as a kid, I would oh, probably yeah, be... That'd be tw- yeah, that'd be like shit. You'd get two really shitty presents. No, I don't know. Two birthday parties so, as a kid? That sounds kind of fun. Yeah, but she's a teenager. She knows that she's not going to get double the presents. Yeah, like when, like after a certain point, like it stops becoming exciting to get presents. It's just like, uh, you know what you're going to get most likely. That's is true, yeah. Yeah, because there is that scene where she shows up as her granddad is like doing business and all of the business guys pull out almost what look to be identical birthday cards <laughs> and hand them to her. That's terrifying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is, um, they're, they're going to have these, these dual parties and, uh, there's some mother daughter bonding going on even, uh, Emily calls Lorelai to help her pick out a gift for Rory, which is uh, a shock to Lorelai and apparently anybody else that she tells it to. Uh, there is a scene here I wanted to talk about, which is that, um, when she's talking to Sookie in the kitchen in the inn, uh, by the way, the only appearance of uh Mikhail, the whole episode by the mm-hmm. way is the scene where uh she tells him to come up with an excuse now so that he can't show up to the party i was kind of hoping he would just show up to the party and be like very annoyed <laughs> why why would he show up and then be annoyed he's always well, he's perpetually annoyed stairmaster it's his whole deal but then why would he show up because i want more of him in the show is what i'm saying he couldn't think of an excuse so he had to show up yeah exactly Um, but it was a fun little deal there. But what I want to talk about mainly is that, uh, the, the weird, like, fruit guy shows up and it's talking about how he combined a raspberry and a kumquat. That's impossible. It's, it's not only impossible, it doesn't sound like it would be good. Yeah, that's against both the laws of God and man. Yeah, he should be, like, struck down. Well, that's going to be a story arc in the show, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's just like, he keeps going further Seven further. plagues come to the town of... Uh, Stars Hollow. Yeah, and Rory has to stop him herself. Yeah. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Yeah, it's just, it's a completely different show, actually, after this episode. <laughs> uh, it just sort of becomes Sabrina the Teenage Witch. That'll be fascinating to see happen before my very eyes. Um, we also get, uh, coffee guy, Luke, is, uh, they, they seem to be hit, hinting very hard at a potential romance between him and Lorelai in this episode, which they haven't really done before. They've, it's like, there's a, there's something there, but they haven't really done anything with it until now where it's full on being talked about. True. They just kind of let it, let it sit there yeah. <laughs> previously. Uh, and he, uh, he's... He even makes a coffee cake for Rory's birthday. The one, uh, like she shows up for the birthday part or for at her birthday at his diner, and he's like, "No, you can't sit here." He's like, "There's like, uh, there's like a table that maybe you should sit at because maybe there's stuff there that I made for you." And that's like the closest he gets to sentimentality, I guess. Yeah, man after my own heart. He's almost pissed off that he's doing it. Yeah, by almost I mean is. We we love it when men show no emotions. Yeah. Uh, but let's make the let's make the apathy cast. Where we're just like, eh, it was fine. <laughs> that was good, I guess. It's it's five minutes long. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It's whatever. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't want to record this anymore. <laughs> then yeah, the, the theme music <laughs> that's plays. how I feel right now <laughs> uh, but uh, the mother and daughter bonding I guess goes surprisingly well 
mom picks out. Yeah, it's like they have a totally harmonious trip to this store where they even agree on a gift to get. Yeah, it's pre- it's pretty wild. Things are going great. There's a no set way. Of TV trays. <laughs> That's right. And then a cop comes up from behind and plugs them both in the back of the head. <laughs> What's going on here? Stairs reliving his fantasy of what he wanted the episode I'm referencing to be. the Sopranos, Keo. Stan, I'm not going to get the reference. I'm not going to get the reference. So, uh, the time comes for the party, and uh, previously Rory had figured out that her grandmother had invited everybody in her school. Which is an... That's uh, too many people. Too many people, and like... You thought everyone that went to school with her was a friend? What a weird idea. Um, She's a very nice girl, Swanson. I guess. True. But like, who was... Normie mindset, Swanson. Normie mindset. But no one ever in any school was friends with everyone. People who don't like you would decline the invitation. I, I guess. I guess that's probably the rationale, right? Um, yeah, but they just they just show up because it's a party. That's what they well, do. Well, they show up, and it's implied that part of the reason half of them show up is because their family knows the Gilmores and uh, yes. is making them show up. Yeah, they don't even know like who <laughs> Rory is. Half of them. Yeah, she shows up to like say something to them at the prompting of her grandma, and one of them is just like, "Who's that?" And the guy's like, "I think that's the late girl whose party this is," and then she <laughs> leaves. Because, of course, why wouldn't you? Um, there's a fun bit that I uh, I enjoyed here during this party where Lorelai has a very um, awkward encounter with a former uh, person she went to high school with. Mm-hmm. So the party's going... Oh, yeah, this, this bitch. <laughs> the party's going swimmingly in the sense that it's very awkward. Um, and Lorelai meets with this uh, lady, Mitzi, that she went to high school with. Uh, she says that she hasn't seen her since high school, but Mitzi immediately interrupts and says seven months, uh, <laughs> applying when she was very pregnant. Um, they, they go back and forth and Mitzi keeps saying how she's trying to not be so, uh, self-centered anymore while like giving a drink to a, a service man and like going on and on about the worst possible. She's saying she's not trying to be rude and then keeps saying the rude as, yes. rudest possible thing that she could say. It's fun. It's a fun little gag. Um, and then the uh, one of the other events in this party is this fucking guy shows up. This uh, I think his name's Tristan. This fucking yeah. If... This man deserves death. Kill him. He's he. I think we've we've definitely talked in length about the things we want this guy to go through. I think Michael Myers should kill him first. Yes. Like, it's a kill to get the audience all pumped up, the blood flowing. I mean, do you really want Michael Myers to be the hero of the story? No, but you gotta have some kills that you can feel good about the ultraviolence. Yeah. There's sometimes, I mean, there are times in, uh, maybe not the first Halloween, but there are times in other <laughs> ones where he does, he does kill people who deserve it. Yeah, but in this case, it would just kind of, I don't know, you'd be rooting for him the whole time after that, no matter what. Yeah. I don't know if that's the goal. Well, here's my other Myers. thing. I'm not so cold-blooded that I want Tristan to actually die. I want this kid to just be like suffer. To f- I think to face Michael some Myers sort of punch setback. a hole through his chest, and with it still beating heart in his hands, and he crushes it. Yeah, and he looks, and Tristan looks down, and he's like, ah, like itchy. Um, from the jeans. Wait, was itchy the mouse or the cat? Scratchy was the mouse. It. Okay, so like itchy. Um, it's Scratchy the mouse? Wasn't he? Why is the mouse called Scratchy? Oh, right. Which one is Rod and which one is Todd? Itchy. I don't know why I just typed in Itchy and not Itchy Simpsons. It's not going to give <laughs> me anything good. Itchy. You didn't get weird skin rashes. Like, Scratchy's the cat, Itchy's the mouse. Come on, this cat has claws, he's Scratchy. That's got to be it. Itchy's the, yeah, itchy is the mouse. Kieran is right this time. Ding. Okay, I thought I look for a second. I thought you were like gonna do this whole Mandela effect thing on me, where I was wrong about no, that. No, we're good friends. Rod. Now let's see which one is Rod. 
<laughs> All right. Well, this also gave me a lot of inanimate carbon rod. Inanimate carbon rod. <laughs> uh, That's what this show needs. Yeah. Like a plank like character. Gilmore Girls or the podcast? Are, are, are we tried it with the podcast. You remember how that went. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about talking about my best friend. Yeah, we're Can't. talking about pumpkin. And it is, I guess, <laughs> it is the season for pumpkin. So I'm surprised it took this long for Keo to bring him up. You guys get really upset when I talk about pumpkin. I'm what upset to now. Crab? <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while. That's true. We did have a. Well, we actually the crab is actually the better version of your stupid pumpkin. <laughs> Where is the crab? Did it come? Br- with, did it come with us when we moved to Denver? No. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, listen. That someone might have to fact ch- fact check whether or not the crab has been here. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think so. and by yeah. someone you mean Martin so anybody could I'm just I just know that the, there's one person who might we need the TV tuners wiki to be fully updated oh, here God. so uh yeah this guy Tristan is no no boy no he's bad news because he's just insistent on the fact that like he's he's hot and Rory he's like should Adam date driver him. it's like Adam driver without the charm Yes. It would be great if it was Adam Driver. He basically just tells tells her that he is inevitable. <laughs> I'm inevitable, Rory. Date me. Your pleasure will be inevitable. Date me, Rory. <laughs> My head game beyond your imagination. Rory, why won't you date me? Date me, Rory. <laughs> um, so, he, Rory refuses because, uh, yes, of course, why wouldn't you? Um, also, he kind of like just comes out of the bushes to do this, doesn't he? Like, he he just enters the, the he he enters when she's trying to like leave to add further embarrassment to her already embarrassing day. Um, so she flip rightfully so she flips out on her grandmother, and her grandmother then immediately turns it onto Lorelai. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's great stuff. It's a circle of blame. Much like Livia Soprano. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, they had a scene where Tristan's talking to somebody and getting, like, instructions, and it's like a demon. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, Tristan. Yeah. Good. Like Adam Dr- He's got the burnt helmet of Darth Vader. <laughs> Grandfather, how tell me, how do I spit game like you did? <laughs> and then he's visited by the ghost of Anakin Skywalker at the end. And he's who tells him he was only with one woman in his entire life. <laughs> and he's just like, ew, That's gross. Kind of a- <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, she and um, Lorelai have like a sort of... They, they commiserate about how the grandma is being sort of a huge, unforgivable asshole. And um, then, then there's like this big fight with words. It's not, no actual fight. Well, yeah, the, this is not like Breaking Bad when Walt and Jesse go at it. <laughs> would you prefer that? Uh, it would like, be Carthatic, I like think. punching each other in the face? <laughs> yeah, and like... As some guy is trying to individually bag cheese? <laughs> yeah. I think, that, I think that would solve their problems. Like, that would help them vent. Or it would kill one of them. One of the two. It would, yeah, it would, one of them would be dead. Um, oh. Instead, what we get is a battle of words where they're arguing back and forth with each other. It's kind of brutal, honestly. Um, and yeah, but- the main crux of the argument here is Lorelai is saying that her mom doesn't really know anything about her or Rory and only tries to find stuff on like the surface level. Uh, Emily says that's not true, and then the Gets fights get out of hand. Rory in, uh, invites her to a party the next day that they're having in Stars Hollow, and that's I think the crux of the argument really is that she doesn't want to go because why would you be with the, the, all these weirdos? Her feels were also apparently hurt. Yes, because her Rory pride. never looked bad in front of people. Um. So yeah, the they have this argument, and that it, it ends there. Uh cut to the party. It's kind of a good party. They're having a good time. Kind yeah, of, the vibes they got are some, there. 
They got actual people at the party. That's the thing, yeah, there's real pe- there's like people who like live lives and aren't just like constantly social cra- social climbing. Clout chasing. Yeah. They're just sort of hanging out. Um and it's it's a good time, you know. Uh they're all hanging out, having a good time and then the the mom uh oh, hold on. There's something I want to talk about for the the parents show up. Which is that they gave Rory a cake with her face on it. Would you... Tasty. Would you want a cake with your face on it? No! That sounds bad. I don't want that. I would eat it. But I don't want to look at an artist rendition of myself on a cake (laughs) before I eat it. Would you eat a cake of my face, Keo? Stare, I would savor that cake. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I would eat a cake with either of your faces on it. Or both. If it was, like, both yeah. of your faces, like, kissing. Kissing. It's, like, half and half. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah, like... <laughs> like a Batman-Superman, like, weird thing. Like so Ebony like and Ivory? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. So it's a half chocolate cake, half vanilla cake? No, it's a half it? vanilla cake, half red velvet cake, because I don't like chocolate cake. Isn't ch- red velvet just like chocolate cake with red dye in it? Is it? Is my life a lie? Th- yes! I think you've been, like, socially conditioned. Welcome to the desert of the real. And to enjoying the red flavor. I don't, I think there's a slight difference, but I'm pretty sure the red color is because it's just been dyed. Red sauce will make your teeth go gray. <laughs> <laughs> so they enjoy this cake of Rory's face, and they're having a good time at the party. And then uh, Lorelai's parents show up, and the uh, the weird bit here that I kind of liked is that Lorelai is not like annoyed or embarrassed that her parents are show- showed up. She's actually just very happy. Um, and they care. Yeah, they just have a they just have a time of uh, Emily and her husband, whose name escapes me, are just trying to find any way to enjoy this party of with a bunch of very colorful guests. Let's say. Um, okay, I I did some research. I did my own research on red velvet cake. It is a chocolate cake, but not a chocolate cake. It's got less chocolate than a chocolate cake would. That would explain. And it's also why I like it. They added red. Uh, ingredients to it. Sometimes food coloring, sometimes just not. Depends on how fancy the cake is, basically. Interesting. Um, so anyway, that means uh, Keo, wrong. Ding! Wow. Alright. Uh, so yeah, um, it, it bas- the party basically goes pretty smoothly, all things considered. Um, the dad, his name is Richard, I looked it up. Uh, he spends most of the party reading, I think it's like a Cosmo magazine and taking a quiz about what yeah. season he is. He's Whether autumn. he's a summer or an autumn. Yeah. He, that's the only two options. He's an autumn. Um, and, uh, Emily goes on a tour of the house and finds a bunch of different things and basically realizes in, uh, a fashion that is at once cathartic and also kind of sad that she does not know actually anything about her daughter, and that Lorelai was right. And, uh, that's... Yeah, big shocker there. Yeah. It's not so much a shocker as it is brutal the way that the actress who plays Emily does it. Reveals the the whole deal there for her. Um, but hey, you know, it's a good party, so I guess it all worked out. Iceman does show up with ice. And there's a lot of conversation yes. about whether or not she wants the Ice Man. And that's the end of the Gilmore Girls. All the problems are solved. That's pretty much right. Uh, that should have been the end of the episode, actually. But there's a thing at the Series. end where the mom is looking out as she's like doing dishes, and she sees Rory and that guy that she likes exchanging, and and, and the guy's giving her a gift. Yeah, and Rory is very upset. Very shocked. Well, Lorelai is. More correctly. Rory is yeah, very Rora, uh, happy. Rory. I'm glad that they put a mosaic over them holding hands. Yeah. You want more of that? <laughs> no, I want less of it. That's why I'm pro-censorship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, teenagers shouldn't be holding hands. That's true. They should be. That's sinful. That's sinful. I don't want. Look, I want a program that has like no, no sinning in it. Honestly, guys. Yeah. Well, that's true. You know, and we should watch Veggie Tales. Yeah, a program free of sin. Don't they like do some sinning to teach the kids a lesson about how not to sin, though? Oh, you're right. So you don't even want it's that. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, <laughs> Keo. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> we, let's watch a good, wholesome show like Seventh Heaven. Oh, no God. sinning. There's no sinning on Absolutely that show. Absolutely no sinning. There's zero sinning on that show. I'm pretty sure there's an episode where one of the kids does pot, and the parents sit them down. Son, you may not pot anymore. So, I have a question for you guys. Um, when did you last actually watch Veggie Tales to oh. see what it is? Uh, I would say sometime around 2004. I think I got the Jonah movie from Hollywood Video and watched that a couple times. Let's see, 2004. How old would I be? Like eight? It'd be 10. Or higher. Yeah. Uh, I would be higher than 10. You're right. Um, yeah, I don't think I was, yes. I don't think, maybe I saw VeggieTales once or twice at that age, but that was about it. I was, like, less than ten years old, That for was sure definitely I, the end. Yeah, I never, like, I wasn't, like, watching it. I wasn't, like, looking at, so it, honestly, looking at it on I, a screen. I have no idea what that program is like. I've seen memes about it, but I've never actually, like, went back and just saw what the deal was with well, it, there's even a, though. There's kind of a straight man tomato, and he has, like, this kind of cucumber friend who doesn't really have it all together yeah yeah he's like dumb and he dances or something right that's yeah. right veggie hails by the way i don't think this is a shocker but it's a, still an ongoing franchise is it still going on that's crazy about animated t- animated shows the veggie tales show is still an animated program being uh we- all right we need to put a stop to this before that keo rain and from 2014 to 2017, Veggie Tales in the house. Which, <laughs> excuse me. I don't know. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Which uh, okay. So for the people at home, we spent 30 minutes talking about Corey in the house right before <laughs> recording this episode. Well, I, I I am saddened to say that Veggie Tales in the house does not involve the Veggie Tales being in the White House. It's Is the it house like of urban? God, I assume. Yeah, I th- I think that's what they're going for is uh, the house of God, maybe. Oh, it's a church. No, it's just the Veggie Tales. It's just the new name of it is Veggie Tales in the House. Also, this is a Netflix original. Oh God! So they're not having a like live a party. action. <laughs> that's, that's right. It's live action. Yeah. Uh, no, Kieran. <laughs> Actually, I would watch the shit out of that if they had people in like vegetable costumes. Just being carried around by wires to hop around. Reciting Bible verses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, the episode ends with uh, Lorelai being conflicted about seeing her daughter with a, ma- a boy. A boy. A boy! And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much where it is. What do you guys think of this uh, this episode of the show? Yeah. Needed more Michael yeah. Myers. <laughs> It has its moments, but it's, um, you know, nothing impressing me. Oh, Kieran's a hard, harsh critic. By saying a thing I he mean, said I mean, at this point weeks. in The Sopranos, we already had college. What does this show have? This, I guess? I don't know. Uh, this is, this is interesting, because I actually kind of enjoyed this one a good bit. More than, I think, anything else we watched in, from this. Uh, I thought the, the the characters were really starting to come together in this one. Um, and it's mostly fun. I don't think this show is... This show's not going to be The Sopranos. I don't think that's what they're going for. Um, it's, this isn't an anti-hero show. Like, Lorelai's not going to go start running over people with her car. <laughs> well, she might. Yeah, not until I, season that, five. I know there's at least one confirmed murderer in this show. From one of the Gilmore girls. Yeah. And we don't yeah, we don't know who it is yet though. We just know Yeah, I liked it fine, but it wasn't it wasn't anything um 
I I would imagine I'd actually actively seek out. That's kind of my thing here. Yeah, I think that is still the standard for me too. But I'm going to give it a tune in because I thought it was probably the best version of uh, Gilmore Girls that we've watched so far. Sure, why not? Yeah, I'll I'll give it a I'll give it a light tune in here. All right, so that's I'm going to give it a tune out because nobody asked. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and that's a tune in for Gilmore Girls. Uh, and I mean, I hope it's a tune in because we still got four more of these to watch. Um, and that'll about do it for this week's episode of the show. Uh, we'll be back next week to talk about Gilmore Girls once again. As I said, four more of these to go. Uh, but if you've got any bonus episodes on uh, up your sleeve that you think, hey, I'd love to hear the TVT crew talk about this. Well, you go over to buymeacoffee.com slash tuners. Single coffee gives you a single thing for us to discuss. And, uh, yeah, you, you could be right here listening to us talk about the thing that you want us to talk about. But uh, for now, it's Gilmore Girls. So until next week, for more Gilmore, more coffee. See ya. Bye. It's over. Uh, hey folks, it's time for the TV Tuner's Fact of the Week. Did you know that Stairmaster has 365 birthday parties a year? That's right. It's my birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs>